Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick White. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube, and I did a ton of the leak code problems. Now I'm doing a ton of the hacker rank problems, so check it out. I got playlists for both of the solution. I have a ton of solution videos for both of them on my channel, so just check out those playlists. Uh, this is another hacker rank one. We're doing two strings. Uh, I'm just going through this interview preparation kit. Uh, this is an easy question, and it says, given two strings, determine if they share a common substring. A substring may be as small as one character. So basically make sure two strings share a character, which is pretty easy. For example, the words A and Art uh, share A, the letter A, the words B and Cat don't share a substring. Uh, complete the function two strings in the editor below. It should return whether uh, either yes or no based on whether the strings share a common substring. So we're just returning yes. It's just returning a Boolean anyway, so we don't even have to return the substring. Um, so if we see a matching character, we just return yes. If we don't, then we return no. So two strings is the following parameters. Da, 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 da. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. You can look through the rest of this. It's pretty straightforward, so we can just implement it. Now let me just talk about what I thought when I first saw this problem. First thing I thought was, oh, well, just brute force is... Um, loop through i is less than s1 dot length uh, i plus plus and then you know you could have this second loop where you go j is equal to zero j is less than s2 dot length and then you can do j plus plus and then you can do well if s1 dot char at i is equal to s2 dot char at j then we can return yes right um, and then we make it through this loop, we can return no, right? So this is just the worst brute force solution. I don't even, I think it doesn't even work because they want to restrict time complexity. Um, there's no semicolon anyway, so let me check. I don't even think I ran this last time because I, I was like, oh, you could do that. And then I was like, all right, let's do something different. Yeah, so it does work on the test case, but when you submit, it's not going to work uh, because they have time restraints. Uh, and if you do this in a interview, that's not going to be good. This is a terrible runtime. You're looping through the both of the strings. So what's a better solution? Well, I thought of a better solution. I thought, well, how about we just take the min size of one of the strings? So I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Uh, we just do, we get the minimum size of a string, and then we loop through whatever's the minimum size. So let's say S1 was the minimum size string. So we could, you know, min size is going to be equal to, uh, you know, S, if, if S1, what I was thinking is like if S1 dot length is less than S2 dot length, you know, something like this. Then I was like, okay, well that means S1 smaller, and all we have to do is loop through S1. So I would do for int i equals zero, i less than S1 dot length, um, i plus plus, and then I would do if I would use this index of method in S2 dot index of if S2 dot index of S1 dot char at i is not equal to negative one then that means that we found a match, right? And we can return yes. Um, and then otherwise, you know, do the same thing with S2. And then I realized, I think index of is a method that's gonna loop through the second thing anyway, so it's really no better. And I kind of got lost for a second. I didn't even know how to do this. It's an easy problem, but like, I don't know, I'm not really intuitive when it comes to algorithms. But I looked at the editorial, and what the editorial says makes perfect sense. We could look at it right here. It's basically saying there's two concepts involved. We just have to find a uh, matching letter. And well, guess what, guys? There's only 26 letters in the alphabet. So we just have hash sets because hash sets only contain, it is only going to contain space 26 max because they don't contain duplicates. So we use these hash sets and we loop through both of the strings separately we build our hash sets out of the characters in those strings, and then if we just find a matching character using like a, they use, we the editorial uses a built-in kind of a hash set, it's called retain all, and it, we'll just do it, we'll just do it really quick. So we'll have a hash set of characters for string one, so we'll just call it string one chars equals new hash set, uh, and then we'll have a hash set of characters for string two, called string two chars equals new hash set. Um, and then we do a loop through string one. So you could do, 
convert it to a char array, I just do the dot char at method. Um, and then we do string one dot chars, um, no, string one chars, sorry, uh, dot add s1 dot char at the current character. So what we're doing here, just in case you don't understand still, is we have a hash set for the characters in string one. We loop through every character in string one. If that character is not in string one chars, we add it in. So by the end of this, we're going to have a hash set of all of the different characters or unique characters in this string. And we're going to do the same thing for string two. I'm just going to copy and paste here, because why not? Right? Um, so then we just do it on s2.length, s2 characters, and then the string two chars. So now we have the hash set of the unique characters in each string. So if any of those characters match, then we know that there's a matching character in both of the strings. So um, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we're going to do string one. We're going to use this method string one dot string one chars dot retain all. It's a built in hash set method in Java of string two chars. And what this does is it deletes everything. String one chars has the unique characters in string one, but it'll delete anything in the hash set that isn't in the thing we pass into it. So we're passing in all the unique characters in string two. So it's going to delete anything that isn't in both of the hash sets, basically. So it's kind of like a set intersection. So now string one will contain the set intersection. So basically all we have to do is if the intersection isn't empty, so if string one chars um, dot is empty is not false. So if it actually has an intersection value, we'll return yes. Otherwise, we'll return no. And that's kind of what they did. I don't even, it's really not even that great of a solution. It's pretty good, but uh, I'd like to find something better. I didn't see anything better in the discussion, though. So um, please let me know if you guys find some better solution than this. Um, you know, it works. So let me just make sure it works here. Um, should work. What are we doing wrong here? Um, Sorry, you have to do I, you have to actually loop. You have to actually have a condition here for your loops. <laughs> Always check syntax errors, especially in interviews. And there we go. Yeah, it passes all the test cases, right? That's the editorial solution. So, I mean, it's not that great. You still have to loop through both of the strings. You still have a hash set of, it's going to be less than 26 characters, so it's really kind of almost constant space. It's like barely any space. Um, compared to the string lengths could be really long. But um, I guess it's probably the best solution. I don't really, I can't really think of anything better, but let me know if you guys know of any better solution. Maybe there's a trick thing out there I don't really know. Just So for a string problem, keep in mind, if you're dealing with characters, you might want to use hash sets and you might want to do set intersections or something like this. Um, let me know what you guys think about my explanation in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe to the videos or whatever. I post like 10 a day or something like that. So uh, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you next time. See ya.